Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kathy Werub and I am so glad that you're here with me today. Okay, so I'm excited about today's topic. So have you ever wondered what makes a novel a great novel? Something that's memorable, that touches you, that that once you finish it, you can't you can't let it go. It just lingers with you afterwards and you think, wow, that was an awesome read. Yeah, I love those type of books, but not all of books fall into that category. And so um, I want to tell you that there are basically two stories in one novel um, and together they will create a great novel. And so there is an action story, which represents the main character's goal. And there's an emotional story which rep represents the main character's need. And so these two are totally separate arcs. They have their own uh, plot twists and lines and everything, but they are so interconnected that one cannot exist without the other. And have you ever read a, a novel or a book where it just falls flat. Like the, they've got tons of action, nonstop go, go, go. But the characters, you just can't relate to the characters. You can't connect with them. Well, that's because they, the author failed to create an emotional need in their main characters. And so on the flip side, have you ever read a romantic or an emotional book and it's got all the right things stuff, but it's kind of flat still because there's no action. There's nothing that, that they need to do outside of that falling in love. So one without the other doesn't work. So let's talk about the action or the goal. This is a physical goal. This is um, the foundation of the novel and it drives the plot forward. Without it, your characters will go nowhere because um, it's been described as an outside force putting pressure on the main character to do something, to take action. And uh, like I said, it, it drives the plot forward. Um, I've got notes, <laughs> just so you know, uh, so I don't forget. Now, the emotional uh, need is uh, the heart of the novel. This is the glue that will hold the story together and will anchor the reader to care about what the main character is doing or saying um, or whatever happens to the main character. So the main character's inner need is can be sometimes unconscious and unrealized, but it's it. But the emotional need is what drives the character's um, growth and transformation. It glues, so it works together with the action. So they have a physical goal that they have to do in order to get through whatever this situation is. But at the same time, they also have an emotional need that this action has to help fulfill. And so they're kind of intertwined together. And without them, your novel will be flat. Now, just as a little note, um, I say emotional uh, need because I know a lot of people refer to this as the romantic or relationship story. Um, I don't call it that because a lot of times they imply that it's romantic in nature, in nature but, but that's not always the case. Sometimes um, it's not a romantic need. Sometimes it's a need for a parent's love and approval or acceptance among friends, um, things of that nature. So. Anything that touches the emotions of the main character is what works. And so that's what I call it the emotional need instead of the relationship need. Because sometimes it's, it's as simple as the character needs to believe in themselves. Um, it doesn't involve anybody else. And so I prefer to call it emotional. Um, now I do write romance. So a lot of my emotional needs are linked with romance. But that's a whole different category. So this brings us to the question, what matters more, the action or the emotion? And I'm going to say both. <laughs> one is not more important than the other. Now, it is true that one of these will 
uh, drive the plot forward the most. It'll be take the main plot lead and the other one will be the secondary plot. Um, so if you are writing a thriller, an action novel, uh, uh, science fiction, fantasy, anything like that, the physical goal will be the main plot lead. And then the, the relationship or the emotional goal will, will support that and um, drive the, the story forward, but it will also support that and it'll be the secondary plot. Now, in a romance, most of the time, the emotional uh, need is what is the main uh, plot line of the story. And then the action serves as the goal to drive that emotional need forward. And so um, while saying that, um, both the action and the emotional will have their own separate storylines of plots, uh, structure, plot twists, everything will be separate. But, but they uh, are firmly entwined. They cannot function without the other. Um, now, it's, a, it's a, up to the author to decide which story will take the ro main role in the novel. But the fact is that you need both of those story arcs to carry your novel to the finish line and make it a great novel. Now, I, want, I know this is a movie, <laughs> but it's my favorite movie of all times. And... Uh, well, one of my favorites. And for instance, the movie Tangled from Walt, from Disney. We'll look at Rapunzel. So her outer goal, her physical goal, is to go see the glowing lanterns. She wants to see what they are. That's, that's what kicks her out of the tower. Um, but her emotional need is several things. I, I think it's, she's, she needs to be reunited with her parents. She also needs to be loved for who she is and not what she can do. She needs to have someone who, tr who believes in her, who will um, help her without uh, hurting her. And so that's her emotional need. Her physical goal is to see the lanterns. But and she doesn't even realize her emotional need at the beginning. All she wants to do is go see the lanterns. And so, but by the end of the movie, she's, re she's realized that she needs an emotional uh, help as well. Now, the other character I want to talk about is Flynn or Eugene. Um, his outer goal is to basically steal the crown and become wealthy. He wants to be important. He wants to make a name for himself. He wants to do uh, dashing, daring things. He wants to be out there. And so that's his goal. His goal is to get the crown back and become wealthy. Now his emotional need that he doesn't realize at first is that he doesn't want to be alone. He wants to feel accepted by those around him and he wants to be part of a family. And so, uh, so they both have, do you see how the, the writers did this? They both have a physical goal and an emotional need. Neither of them realize their emotional need. Um, and it's never explicitly said that that's what their need is. But by the end of the movie, you kind of figure out that's what their emotional need is. And then to add some romance to this situation, their falling in love is actually a byproduct of their emotional needs. Um, so their goals carry them forward. Their emotional needs cause their characters to transform and grow. And so because Rapunzel was raised by a mother figure who um, routinely belittled her, held her captive, treated her really badly and, and used her for her own, her own selfish gain, once she was out from underneath Gothel's thumb, this allowed her to experience what a true relationship was like. And her relationship with Eugene or Flynn grew because he treated her like, uh, like an equal, like someone um, that he could trust. And so the same thing with Flynn or Eugene, um, his past, he came from a, a place of, uh, 
abandonment. He grew up in an orphanage. He never knew what his, who his parents were. And, and then, so all of his life, he's been trying to, to be someone, to be important to someone. And then all of a sudden he has a chance to ca take care of someone else beside himself. And this forces him out of his selfishness and it allows him to, the freedom to become vulnerable with someone else. And so because of that, because he, he learns that he can trust Rapunzel, then they fall in love and we know the ending. And so as you can see, even in movies, um, Rapunzel wouldn't go anywhere if she did not have the goal to see the lanterns. Now on her way to see the lanterns, she starts to meet her emotional needs. And the same thing with Flynn. He does, his goal is to t steal the crown back and become wealthy, but this drives him forward and it changes his character. Um, so the physical drives their emotional needs forward. And so that's, if you can look at your book that, that way, when you're writing it, that, okay, so yes, you have this physical goal, like this is something that your character needs to do, but you can also weave in that emotional need to, um, to transform them because all readers love a book where the characters in the, that start out at the beginning are not the same characters that end up at the end. They love that. Um, even if they don't realize it, that hooks them, that emotional need hooks them. The, um, it glues it all together. It, it ties it all together. And so a really great novel will take the action and marry it, so to speak, with the emotional. And together, um, you will have a great novel. All right. I think that's all it, all I'm going to say today. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. And maybe you don't agree with me. <laughs> maybe you do agree with me. Whichever way, leave a comment in the, in the box below. Uh, give me a thumbs up because honestly, a thumbs up tells YouTube that you like this. The algorithm will pick it up and show it to more people. Um, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell if you don't want to miss anything. Um, and yeah, have fun writing people. And let me share your favorite books below also. I would love to know what kind of books you love to read, what you, what books you think are great novels. Um, yeah, it would be so much fun to just chat with you. So I will see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.